Hey, welcome back to uh, the MMO class here at 3dbuzz.com. I am Derek T. Stevens. I got my cowboy hat, bunny slippers on, my thong, 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 thong. Man, it's like 87 degrees here in North Carolina today. Brilliant, beautiful day. I know Mr. Nelson, my handler at the Buzz Caves, got the same thing on, smiling from ear to ear with his curly hair and pretty lips. With that said, we're going to get started straight away. Um, if you can, uh, Mr. Nelson, go ahead and bring Steve in. Uh, Steve Curtis is uh, our lead board. It's hey, for environments. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey man, like what in the hell was all that? I thought something was going on in the buzz cave. How you doing, man? Oh, all right, how are you? Uh, you know, working my booty off, and uh, you will be soon too. Uh, real quick, soon, soon he says. <laughs> uh, so, hey, I really want to I want to throw this out here right now because I, I believe in, in giving people their, their credits and due. Uh, Steve has been. I, I consider you a friend, even though you know you're crazy, and your kids are insane. I consider you a friend, and you have proven yourself over and over and over. Uh, our phone app game comes out very soon. That gives you some street cred. Uh, the lead of Imaginary Studios has got a hold of you to be doing work for them, and uh, we just signed a contract for 224 cards for a game. Uh, so the reason I say that is Steve's getting some street cred. Uh, and it would behoove all of us here if you're if you're not doing environments and that's your thing. If you want to do that, uh, Steve's he's been indoctrinated into the business. Uh, he can tell you some good stories, bad stories. He's a great leader. Um, you know, I, I'd follow him. Really would. And then I would trip him if Dracula was after me, or a bear. <laughs> but I would. <laughs> I would trip you and I would get out of there. But anyway, I want to throw that's some. That's fine. The werewolf in me will take care of it for you. Uh, Roger that. I think it would hurt to change. Um, real quick, uh, I, I didn't want to steal your thunder last week. Uh, we, we got some people in here that, uh, you know, we had the meeting at the Buzz Cave, and they're asking about the environment art, and I'm like, mm, well, I, I want to say X, Y, and Z, but I didn't want to steal your thunder. Uh, Donald did get a hold of me on uh, Skype tonight. He's not able to make it, but he's got some brilliant, I, I, I know, right? But he's got some brilliant ideas about the Parthenon. Uh, that he's working on at the moment. He will be in the drawing class, the anatomy physiology, tomorrow night, and he'll make it back to our MMO class uh, next Wednesday. But anyway, share what happened to you with Buzz. Well, we had an uh, incredibly awesome week down at the Buzz Cave, or nearly a week. Uh, did a couple of photo shoots, had a lot of fun. Uh, if you look at Derek on Facebook, you can see a picture of him abducting my daughter. It was yeah, you know, my wife took that off my Facebook page. She's like, you look like a pedophile. She's, there's, no con there's no context. It just looks like you're, you're kidnapping a little girl. I'm like, well, that's what I was doing. And I had to, kill, I had to double tap his dad in the head and, and lace. I mean, I'm professional. Good times. Good times. Good times. Good times. But anyway, to, to the MMO meeting. On top meeting. of that, we were able to uh, sit down with uh, Jason for a few hours and we had Nelson and Ray and pretty much everybody there it was a really good meeting. Um, Jason is very excited about pretty much everything we're doing with the MMO. He's really, really happy to see people stepping up. Uh, he has loved, at least on my side, the environment work that we've gotten from uh, Wolf and Donald and myself. It's just, it, the meeting couldn't have gone better. I, I was really expecting to at least see some stuff shot down and I think we successfully pitched pretty much everything we were doing with it. Well, granted, we had to get him really drunk first. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know the secret, margaritas. Margaritas at that, that, that not Japanese, the Mexican restaurant, yeah. Uh, he, he loved it. Now, I want you to share with the guys and gals here, uh, because Jason was somewhat, somewhat specific. He, he's a huge WoW player, and he loved the environment and the direction that we're going, but... Can you share with all of us what directions he was pushing you in? Um, actually, uh, we had started out under this premise of a really harsh environment, um, and he, he uh, did concur that that was where he had been. But uh, having been a really big WoW player, uh, he did say, hey, I really, I really want to see all kinds of stuff, um, from the nice areas to the very harsh areas. Uh, he was excited about the thoughts of the tie-in with... Uh, Ray's idea as far as architecture for stuff, so we're definitely going to pursue that in a couple of I mean, weeks. Um, he was very excited about the Hive idea that uh, Wolf, as I understand, has some stuff to show tonight. 
Indeed, I'm very excited about that. Um, also, Mr. Nelson, are you there? Mr. Nelson is here. He's buggered off. No, uh, he, he's, he's hyped up on coffee, too. Hey, uh, I got a question, and I, I don't want to steal anyone's thunder, because, again, uh, Nelson implanted a small chip in the back of my head where the barcode was at. And every now and then I, I get a pain, he, he pushes the button, and he'll make my head explode if I, I say anything out of context or out of turn. Are you able to kind of give, maybe give a hint on what you're working on right now? A thing. <laughs> well, I, I, we don't want to say too much about it just because um, it's something that Jason and I are going to be playing with um, pretty soon here. Um, All right. And we don't know what the time frame is really. It just is, it depends on you know what gets done and how soon those things get done. And... All right, no worries. All I know, guys and gals, it is a huge, huge announcement. And to get Nelson excited on this, uh, anyway, I won't say anything. Um, tell you what, is uh, Sid in class tonight? We'll get Sid and Wolf. We'll do some character. Go ahead and bring the whole art team in, uh, if you can, Mr. Nelson, Ray, everybody. And then uh, we'll show our creature designs, because what we're doing right now is uh, the last class. Dude, I was, I was spent. We even pushed class back a day because I, I had such a brilliant, love the time at the Buzz Cave. It was so nice to be around other artists, very creative people. The six-hour drive and the two hours of sleep I got that night, it, it was bad. So last art class... Whining. Whatever. Stop that. Play dead. Play dead. Stop it. Play dead. Uh, so last art class, and Stephen, this is funny. True true life story. We're in the mall at uh, in Nashville. I'm like, man, when I go home, I'm not for sure what to do for class. And we're urinating next to each other. It's honest to God. You're like, uh, you should do armor. I'm like, yeah, armor sounds good. Let's start on that. So that's how the, the whole armor genre started to spin. It was thankful to be in a bathroom together with Steve. Wow. There you go. TMI. You know, full disclosure, right? So uh, I come home, and uh, I do some, some concepts. Uh, and we came up with an idea, Eve, my lip shone, and uh, Wolf, both of them kind of hit it up, and, and myself. Uh, we, we wanted to do some sort of piece together armor, even for a heavy fighter, because uh, we want our Alethians to be long and lean and fast. I, I can't really picture an Alethian in, in full plate that would slow them down and hinder their, their, their natural attributes. So we start mucking about with that, and then the, my question was, all right, well, if we have dragons in the game, are we going to, like, we can farm dragons, we can get skills, and this and that, like, is it Oblivion or some game I used to play, I can't remember. So it spawned the idea of, all right, does the egg come first or does the chicken come first? So let's draw some creatures that have some sort of armor on it and that we could take off and piece together for armor for our Lethians. And then Mr. Ray brought the idea for the comic book story, and Chelsea is starting on that uh, today, actually. I'm very happy and very proud of her for that. Uh, but we needed to get this, this hive idea and these insects so uh, tonight we're going to show uh, our creatures that we've come up with, kind of discuss them, and uh, it's an idea of how we could take apart some of their plates and fashion armor from them. Because in the game, you know, we, we want to have crafting, we want to have people to be able to build stuff. And I think that's very important. So do we have everybody in here? Uh, yeah, we have Eve, Ray, Steve, Sydney, and Wolf. Good Abend, my Liebchen. Guten Abend. Or besser, was, guten Morgen. Uh, was machst du so heute? Uh, größtenteils zeichnen für das andere Spiel, in dem ich dir erzählt habe. You didn't get any of that, did you? I got some of it. I just like it when you speak that Deutsch <laughs> word, uh, for our international class. Uh, thank you again for staying up so early in the morning for us. Yeah. No problem. Well, Basically, I, I, I need to get uh, up actually really early, probably going to um, do an all pull an all-nighter because um, yeah, I didn't want to miss out on the class. Um, well, thank you very much. Most of the stuff I, um, I did, I didn't have time to color. Um, so it's just um, some black and white sketches, but... Um, 
yeah, some may need explaining or have some scribbles on it. And um, you, you know, that's the nature of concept art. And I yeah. honestly believe, you know, if you're a good concept artist and you're in it for the long haul, and again, passion, you're going to make some notes on it uh, to explain and help give that, that field of depth. Uh, so, Sid, are you here? So, what the hell is that? What's up? <laughs> All right, Sid, uh, you're, you're in charge of your character creation, so I want you to take the lead. You tell us who you want to go to, and let's talk about these creatures that we have here. How's that? Okay, well, do we want to do Eve first? Or she may want to go? Sure. All right, Roger that. Mr. Nelson, if you could take Eve's screen pretty please. Thank you, sir. You're a scholar and a gentleman with a sprinkle of scoundrel. Um, yeah, basically, um, first I did some um, designs for the, those two vouchers that Ray actually wanted. I think even in the same um, night, uh, right after um, our last meeting, it's from, from the other one. It's the only ones I actually uh, got to, around to color. We've saw, uh, seen them on Facebook. I like that they're bright and vibrant. That's nice. I first thought maybe a blue, but um, since uh, Ray wanted them to be more amphibious, amphibious um, a green or yellow kind of skin would uh, look better. And I played around with the idea of having them um, uh, walk on all fours, but I basically think um, that when a um, biped, the hump um, and those those long beaks uh, or maws, however you want to call them, uh, give them a more threatening and kind of creepy uh, atmosphere. I'd have to agree because it's humanoid, but we know obviously it's not a human. And we could have some really great fun. Uh, again, it'd be more of a technical side, uh, but almost like a squirrel, how they almost hop and walk at the same time, so they can be on all fours and get anyway. That, that's way ahead down the line. But continue, please. I also like that they evolve two fingers like the other Olympians. Yeah, um, I don't know if you um, uh, know this for Avatar, Cameron. Uh, one of the reasons um, it took so long, not just because of the CG stuff, but um, he had basically uh, everything kind of planned out um, that on this, this planet, all the animals would have six legs. Uh, and stuff like that, and kind of stuck with it uh, so that it would actually make sense. And I kind of thought, since our Elithians have um, two fingers and a thumb, maybe this uh, could be kind of a trait uh, throughout uh, most of the mobs and uh, monsters you would encounter on Elithia. Hey, Nelson, tell Buzz I need a plane ticket from Germany to Dixon, Tennessee, or Nashville, so we can get Eve over here and... And then we get the studio up and running. I love her ideas. She's very, she can speak several languages, which I'm very jealous of. But I love your thought process. And again, this is an MMO class and concept art. And I really try to nail, this is a concept artist. There's got to be reasons for what we do besides looking cool. And Eve, you're the quintessential spot-on woman artist to do this for us. So well done. Good thought process. Thank you. This is Ray. I like it very much, and I absolutely agree that uh, the anatomy should be consistent through all the different creatures. Thank you. Um, so that's uh, about, well, the sea vultures. Um, here, um, this was kind of a lizard crossed with kind of uh, having a snake head, horns, and kind of big um, horn or... Um, bone-like uh, scales that basically when um, I wasn't thinking about uh, armor sets in particular but uh, for example if you kill that uh, mob you could um, get uh, those scales as drops and uh, for example from the bigger scales uh, you could make breastplates, arm guards uh, and stuff like that. Nice, very poignant, good idea. Mm -hmm. um, that actually, uh, I'm, because I play lots of 
well, games and MMOs, they basically always are kind of big birds. And for example, um, for some regions, when they uh, have um, feathers in their armor or stuff like that, when you want um, feathers to drop, you need kind of bird-like creatures. So um, that was kind of a uh, um, vulture-like um, idea again with a hump and uh, being kind of dragging his uh, arms behind it. That's creepy. Seriously, that is that's a freaking creepy bird. I did. I didn't actually like the the second one. I wanted to crop it. Kind of forgot before session, but um, I really kind of uh, like the way this one turned turned out. I love it, man. It's mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well done. Uh, if I could interject real quick, there's something I forgot to mention last week. This is right. Uh, yeah. for, for Eve. Um, in the second of the challenges in the comic, there is yeah. a beautiful songbird. Now, it needs to be uh, alien. It has to be a lethean. But it, that should be pretty. If you okay. can do one of those, because I know you love birds. I'm kind of uh, right now working on some hummingbird uh, stuff for another project. Basically, drop the lightning bug uh, um, idea for, okay, uh, for hummingbird. Um, so that's, that's no problem um, for uh, some uh, interesting, exotic, alien-looking bird. I gave Steve the bird just the other day. Uh, Steve loves <laughs> birds, too. Anyway, yeah. Mr. Ray, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I'm just saying that Eve does such a great job on birds, particularly, that I'd, I'd love for her to take a crack at the, the songbird that's in the second. It's a key element of the second challenge. Okay. I may even try, um, when um, you go on uh, with different screens, I maybe even try to whip something up during sessions, so um, I even may have something to show later. Brilliant. Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of another lizard thing because basically um, you wanted me to do deserts and um, uh, the idea, I don't know if you know, uh, I've seen some kind of desert foxes. They kind mm -hmm. of always also have kind of long legs and, and a hump because uh, sand or the, air, um, the um, earth surrounding them is kind of hot. Basically, uh, um, that's the idea for the... Um, form of the, of the body. Um, base uh, standard um, monster you can kill and uh, maybe because this could be kind of a horn plate, um, like you see, you could uh, use it as braces for legs or... Brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. I, I really uh, like how the form follows both the, uh, both the previous and previous one to a degree and the skull kind of follows the uh, arm. That's absolutely brilliant. Indeed. Hey, Eve, you have, you yeah. have uh, on the creature, you have those spikes on its back. What about spikes, those spikes being on the um, arm bears? Basically, I thought, um, uh, for example, lizards, when they break out of, um, egg, of their eggs, and even birds have this, um, uh, when they're born, uh, have this kind of uh, thorn on their beaks. Um, so this is basically this part here. And when you would take uh, this skull uh, and use it for armor, this kind of beak uh, that was uh, in, in front of the face would still be kind of there. Could be poisonous, for example. Hello and welcome. Awesome job. Um, yeah, this you see those, those spikes that you have on it, like on the uh, right side of the picture of the arm? Uh, if they the, were sticking out, if they were sticking out, like up the arm? That yeah, that, that was an idea. it would be an idea too. Um, I could um, play around with it, no problem. Um, this one was from last session. You've seen that already. Last session, last session. Um, this one I did yesterday. It was kind of a mix between um, some different armors, 
types I found. Um, basically, I'm when glad you added the mask because I was thinking about the desert environment as well. And yeah. you know, you need a mask from the sand desert because if you look at the Elysian's face, uh, the nose is flat like a bat or a an ape gorilla, and there's no way they could bend their head down, so to speak, to keep that sand and gunk out of it. So it's a great touch. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that was basically um, my thought is exactly when you have, for example, Mad Max um, and stuff like that, where they um, usually have lots of a kind of cloth and scars uh, or bandages to shield from, um, from the sand, sandstorms and stuff like that. So let me tell you what, sand sucks, okay? <laughs> you get wet and you have to roll around in sand because someone tells you to. It goes everywhere. It's unforgiving. It will find every crevice and every hole that you have, and you will remember it for a very long time. All mm -hmm. right, continue, please. I think we're getting um, close to TMI again. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a couple more birds heading your way there, Steve. Um, and basically, um, uh, those parts would be, for example, cloth. You could um, you could use leather pieces. Um, I've seen some armors that actually had <clears throat> kind of uh, either scales or um, bone chips that are tied with le leather straps to make a kind of a primitive um, chainmail. Um, there are some maybe bugs that have those kind of scales you wanted to use for um, basically the Elithians, um, uh, male Elithians heads. So I thought maybe there are some kind of bugs or stuff like that that have those kind of scales too. Okay. That you can uh, basically um, make those braces. Well, let me point something else out because, again, it's, it is an art class. What I want everyone to see, look at the legs and how the armor flows with the form. Uh, it's really important. And even the midsection there, it looks usable, like it can bend. Uh, again, we don't want to le have our lethians in, in plate mill. Can you imagine being in plate mill in, in the desert, how hot that crap would get? It wasn't too, in the Crusades in real life, Mr. Ray can correct me if I'm wrong. You didn't see many full plate mill, like, knights running around in the Crusades. So, uh, very... I like how it looks like it can breathe. Um, yeah, basically I thought about um, different kinds of materials you can use for crafting, like for example, having loose drops from enemies like leather, um, uh, skin, bones, uh, scales, uh, but also for example having maybe from some kind of metal or uh, stuff um, those kind of um, shoulder plates. And um, I don't know how exactly they are called, but um, similar to, uh, for example, papyrus or stuff like that, um, when you um, dry those weeds or hemp, for example, and make kind of a material out of it to have, um, instead of kind of real trousers, um, those kind of like braces that are basically made out of braided um, grass, hemp, or whatever that. Um, could be growing in a desert and be um, dried and uh, manufactured into a fabric. Nice. And again, with this little bit what you're talking about, we can even start thinking about the economy, how you, you can make stacks of X and then sell them for X. Because I really believe economy, I've talked about it before, can drive and kill a game or drive a game and make it thrive. Mm -hmm. So the more, I guess, options we can give, I, I think it's brilliant. Sure. Um, those are just kind of leather or a cloth um, gloves, fingerless gloves. And here I just um, put in some, or uh, combined an, another idea I had, um, I did with um, the kids a while back, I could find here. Um, basically, the idea for uh, for those um, NPC kind of uh, different tribe looking um, uh, clothing styles, and uh, for example, in the woods or in the mountain uh, area, they could have some sort of footwear, um, and it was kind of um, that's where this one came. Uh, in kind of a mix between uh, real braces, um, some 
plating and uh, leather, basically. Um, yeah. Sid, what are you thinking about all this, girl? I'm thinking lots of this is pretty awesome. Um, I th think um, this probably is, yeah, that's my last one. That was kind of uh, um, also an idea for a kind of mob that would roam the desert, kind of a mix between a snake head and kind of crab, um, like um, case encasement or uh, body parts are really kind of made of sheeteen or um, stuff bugs are, are made out of and, and crabs. Um, basically, uh, kind of alt uh, altered um, an idea I've seen in another game where they basically had really tiny legs, like um, just like a spider with no body, with no arms and stuff, and um, kind of played around with the idea with a thing that has a snake head, but kind of scorpion arms and crab body or, um, or legs or even maybe spider body that could uh, drop different uh, kind of material depending um, from what part of the body is taken. Brilliant. And again, because it drops, you can get uh, different bits for armor. There's meat there that can be used. You can maybe, if it's a poisonous creature, you rogues or whoever can get poison sacks from it. Again, it can drive economies. So, uh, again, we have to think about all these things in a holistic sort of view. So, uh, whenever game mechanics comes about, we can give these guys options. So, really well thought out. I'm very proud of you. I'm very glad you're part of the team. Thank you. So basically that's um, my contribution for the week uh, because of um, that uh, I didn't have that what, much wait a minute, wasn't time. There, wasn't there something what? before that? Before I that? Some, I saw some other bugs that look more ant-like. Um, that was what I drew actually um, last session. Mr. Ray, um, I, I didn't see these. Yeah, they were there last week. Uh, they were? Huh. Basically, I um I had uh, um, I was fortunate enough that uh, they kind of stayed on my screen while I was scribbling, and Ray was talking about the hive idea and this whole um, queen thing. Um, I kind of mixed the alien queen with um, a collector hat from Mass Effect, and basically I don't know how many of you guys know Earthworm Jim. I had to buy you that. that. Yeah, Earthworm Jim was awesome. And uh, the big bad queen in this game is, uh, uh, how is it called? Queen for, with a slug for a butt. This is kind of, kind of a skeleton <laughs> with a big kind of slug. Uh, and, um, when Ray was talking about how she's more vola vol um, rider. voluptuous. Yeah, voluptuous. Thank you. And... Um, uh, kind of uh, bigger and rounder. Uh, that was kind of the the image. It almost looks of... like a bird-like thing is about to assault that uh, creature. There. <laughs> yeah, basically that's the, that was uh, the thing I scribbled while everyone else was um, uh, talking and discussing ideas. And I was kind of um, fortunate enough that they stayed on the screen. So uh, most of the guys who were on the last uh, session seen this. And, and again, we're talking about size variations and stuff. Uh, Mr. Ray really wanted these, these insects to be about the size of a, a Shetland pony. Uh, the queen will be bigger, obviously. And, and the hive we'll get to here in a little bit uh, needs to have big tunnels because have you ever seen an ant colony right you know you got several swarms of little ants and they're, they're they're taking all these big other insects grasshoppers what have you i don't know if they, they take them to pieces like we've been to serial killing school let's chop and quarter this drag it down the queen but we needed to have some big room um i wanted to ask the uh what did i put that uh, environment guys um because I actually did something uh, for another project, which I basically can't use. And if there's some kind of interest in it, I put it in my Dropbox. And um, 
Yeah, basically, oh, yes, I did see that. I really like that. It's beautiful. So if you if you want, I was kind of uh, not really happy because I was kind of starting out with the comic or kind of those Looney Tune styles of backgrounds, and it kind of got way too complicated for what I actually intended. Man, and I would like to get a picnic lunch out there, and pretend there's honeysuckle in the air, and drink some wine, and I, I would go there. I, I like that little obelisk. Is, is it a light, a light tower? Uh, yeah, actually, it was the idea that having a, a light tower, and there's even a kind of a boat um, way back in the, in the background. The thing that really stuck out to me was, uh, although it's very beautiful, when you get around that uh, kind of tower or obelisk, back in there, it, there's almost kind of that swampy area that we talked about with a lot of water inlets, and at least it looked like to me. It was a very cool view. You're, uh, you're free to use it because basically I did it again, and I'm still not really um, feeling it as I probably redo the basic idea with the beach and uh, the lighthouse uh, third time in a row, but um, yeah. Third time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> but let's stop um, here and throw a gold nugget at you guys, because Steve went through this with uh, the guys from the Netherlands. They wanted cartooning. I really believe we nailed cartooning. Then it became uh, more realistic. I remember talking to you. You're like, well, any suggestions? Um, what I would like everyone and encourage everyone to do is, A, first of all, draw what you see. And if you like a particular artist, like Looney Tunes, go to Looney Tunes, Google the stuff, and study and break down how they're doing it. It's almost like you have a maze, you know, as a kid. You start from the start. It just takes forever. So I start from the end and work my back way backwards, you know, piece it together like that, and then you'll get that certain style. But at the same time, it's very important as a concept artist to be able to do anything because when your client says, I need X, you're like, well, I don't do X, I do Y. You're going to lose out on a job. So I'm really happy with what you're doing, Eve, with all the different styles and variants. And same with Steve, Eve and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant uh, stuff. Uh, basically, I don't where did I put those again? Yeah, it was kind of an idea of, hmm, open. For mechanical birds, like I said, for something different, and um, but yeah, I try to get something um, done while um, we're in nice. session. So um, maybe um, I have some results for you later, Ray. Okay, great, brilliant. Okay, Mr. Nelson, if you can take my screen, please. Alrighty. Well done, Eve. Like I said, thank you. Hey, no worries. All right, we'll go to the Elysian chick here in a second. Let me go to my bug creatures. Now, a lot of lack of sleep, but I'm kind of actually happy with these guys, and I'm hoping I'm, I'm, this is what you're looking for, Mr. Ray, or close to it. Let me get my little pointer out. I gave you their crab body light we talked about and the legs. We, we talked about how we want them to be not vertical but somewhat upright so I gave them little bitty I guess areas where they can manipulate fine uh, fine tools and, and render render what is it ring 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 flesh from uh, from a body and use these for combat a uh, very wasp isk looking head and this is another rendition uh, again going with that crab like armor and the they don't have any fine-tuned manipulation type with this particular insect. But uh, this is what I was envisioning whenever uh, you were talking to Mr. Ray. So are we getting close to what you're talking about? Because we, I'd like to be able to nail something down so Chelsea, when she gets here, she's like, oh, this is what they look like. Uh, the only thing missing is a stinger. Ah, bullocks. Shiza. <laughs> That was funny. That was pretty cool. All right, so I need to go on Stinger. <clears throat> I think it's a pretty cool look. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. great. I'm just saying, add a Stinger and we've got it. Brilliant. Can I use... I'm not trying to use a bloody... Brush. I'm He's hitting a brush. I, I drew one, but it was, it was very rushed. Yeah, I do too. 
quick ones. What's that? I do two quick sketches of loves. Well, hey, I'm a firm believer even a quick sketch is a good sketch. Again, this is the nature of concept. They don't have to be all finished and stuff. What really burns my biscuits, and I think I'll share this with you, uh, I love a lot of this finished beautiful work like Brahm does. Great work. Like that's what concept work should look like. No, that's finished work. Uh, that's probably about 50 to 60 different drawings to get to that one spot, to that finished look. We're at the stage now where quick drawings are what we need so we can we can spawn ideas. So we'll definitely look at these. I want to look at everybody's work. I don't want to sell anybody down the river, sell anyone short. You guys put some work together, and we're going to look at it. Uh, let me show you my Alethean. Okay, here's a... Uh... Hello, Mr. Ray. Model me. Tweak my vertices. Okay, that was very childlike, but uh, that's all right. Yeah, Mr. Thimble made me do that. He lives in my thumb. We all know that by now. Um, I did it. Shut up. I love you all. I, I did. The uh, question is, where is your thumb? <laughs> moving right along. Moving right along. Um, I smashed it the other day when Mr. Thimble lived, and he, he likes to keep it warm, so I usually have it in my coffee. Or Anyway, um, I, I adopted Eve. Thank you for getting me off track. Uh, the bone spurs here in uh, the elbow. I'm not super happy with the head, and your lead artist guy here should not say rushed. I'm happy with it. We can definitely tweak some things around. But Mr. Ray needed a, uh, a model or an image plane so he can start modeling. And here in a little bit, we have a huge surprise for everybody here. Mr. Ray is a Renaissance man. Some of the stuff he's been working on. Uh, I'm not going to steal his thunder, but we'll be taking the screen very shortly. But anyway, this is my idea of uh, a female Elysian. I like to maybe, uh, <clears throat> hold on, picking E for eraser. B for my brush. Oh, Steve doesn't, let me bring down my brush a little bit. Maybe not so big. Clavicle bone, there we go, something like that. And I need some areas in through here for her rib cage. But she's long, she's cylindrical. And uh, again, Sid and I were talking from almost the get-go, the beginning, how we wanted them to have very long legs. And I hope I captured that. Is this to your satisfactory, uh, Miss Sid? Uh, I can't see it so much from the side, but the front view looks good to me. As long as I please you, because I've, I've encountered you for a week, I never want to make you mad. So that is a good thing. Um, all right, good. So, uh, I'm sorry, yes, sir. Um, two things that actually you really wanted to include that are missing from your drawing is you wanted the hands to be larger. Ah, bullet, you're right. Oh, thank you. And you wanted the rear toe to be able to grip. It's in the right spot, but that's not gripping anything. What do you think? That may be a little bit too big. That's a little bit too big. And all I did, guys and gals, was I selected uh, this hand area right through here, hit Control T, and then you can manipulate and do all sorts of funky stuff for it. And Enter Control D to deselect. Yeah, I'll have to work on that. But do you think the hand should be that big compared yeah, to? Yeah, I, I actually like it like that. Yeah. If they can put a man's head just in its hand and crush it, that'd be good. All right, hold on. Let me go back to my brush. Making myself some notes. Bigger. Uh, thank you, Steve. Seriously, there's so much that's going on in all aspects of our lives and with this game in particular. I can't believe I forgot it. Thank you very much. Uh, this here. Like that, you think? Yeah, maybe extend it a little, and maybe that claw shouldn't be retractable since it's raised, and that should stick out. Okay. Let me write down... Back. So, and, and, hey, seriously, thank you for calling me on that, because uh, I bitch and complain about you guys. You need to do X, Y, and Z, and I, I boogered it up. So thank you very much for that. And Mr. Ray, I'm sorry if you took all this time to model this. There's gonna be some tweaks. 
I haven't had a chance to start it yet, so that's fine. Okay, I will, I will sort this out and get to it to you by tomorrow afternoon, okay? Works for me. Roger that. So who wants to show the next bug, Sid or uh, Mr. Wolf? Uh, well, cause I think, did you do any environment stuff, Wolf? I, I did. Okay, well, I've only got two things, so I'll go. Cool. Okay, Mr. Nelson, if you can take Sydney's sc uh, screen. And what we'll do is we'll take Sid's screen. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on with her two things. We'll take a short break. We'll come back, uh, get Wolf involved, and that will tie into the environment stuff. You got it? I got it, man. All right. These are just quick. She said wasps and a crab, so I kind of tried. It, I thought it might be cool if the stinger could, like, bend, you know, like, kind of like fiberglass does. It has some movement to it. So I kind of threw that in there. Interesting idea. Well, let's assemble on. And this one I kind of did kind of a crab look. I mean, spider look. Sorry. And, again, with the bending stinger Nervous. and its front pinchers look a little weird, but what's she going to do? It's it's concept art. This is like I said, it's not finished art. We're throwing ideas out there, and that's the other thing I want to tell everybody here in class right now. Uh, we have all sorts of levels of artistic ability. Uh, we're never going to make fun of you. Uh, I'd like to encourage everyone, even if you can draw stick figures. I want you to be a part of this. I, I really believe. I know no one else has ever done anything that we're attempting to do. You, you do this, it'll be part of your portfolio if this is indeed what you want to do. And just to collaborate with other artists, uh, then you, you draw. You're going to be taken out of your comfort zone, and I'll push you, and everyone else will push you. You will be a better artist, and you'll be better because of it. So, again, get a hold of me, or uh, we'll take some questions here, and uh, maybe someone will, will pipe up and say, hey, I have some ideas. All right, say so go ahead. Oh, that's, that's, that's what I've got. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and woman of few words. You've been hanging around Mr. Nelson way too long. I can see your conversation now. Something like, huh? A nod. And that's it. And that's what you talk about all day. I don't see much of Nelson. Nelson stays in his room a lot. He, he's working all the time. Same with her. She's upstairs all the time. That's not true as of recently. Did Buzz chain you to the, your desk yet? No. That's coming. Uh, we we shall not talk okay. about that just now. He lets Nelson out occasionally. Uh, let's open it up then real quick for any questions from our panel right now. Uh, Ms. Nelson, explain to them how they do this again. Uh, I want any anything we, we've talked about so far, any of your ideas, we can take you know screens and share some different views. Uh, this is the way things do. Uh, or get done. It's collaborative. So anybody got a question? Uh, I don't see anything. Is anything going on with the little buzznet thing? Um, yeah, no. Not that I see, except for it, apparently it Sydney's look, mic is bugged. It looks a little uh, scorpion-like as well. Spider, scorpion, crab. Mm -hmm. I like it. We're coming up with some good ideas. And on that note, it is uh, about 5 till 10, my time, Eastern time, and it's getting very early in Eve's time. So let's take a 10-minute break. We'll make some more coffee, uh, do your thing, and we'll come back in 10 minutes, and we'll take Wolf's screen, and then uh, we'll discuss about environments. And then we have a huge, huge surprise, Mr. Ray, get your stuff ready, because uh, the world is waiting for what you've got to show us. Will do. Roger that. We'll be back in 10, everybody. Hey, welcome back, everybody, after that short break. I personally got a golf ball out and counted all the little divots in the ball, and I will just leave it ambiguous. It's over 300. Uh, that's what I did in my break. I hope everyone had a good one, got their drink on, and I'm not talking about adult beverages at the moment. Uh, so we're coming back now here to the live or recorded, depending where you're at and time frame. Uh, Miss Sydney was showing her screen. Quick recap, we're going over armor made from insects, uh, talking about creatures now can be implemented in armor. And I think we got a good start on some creatures, some desert creatures, some insects. It will be highlighted in the comic book. It will be online, uh, hopefully very shortly. And uh, right now, we're going to be switching to Mr. Wolf Knightley's screen. Uh, 
for some more creature concepts. Then we're going to come back and talk about some environment stuff. And then Mr. Ray has a huge surprise for everybody. And uh, I can't wait for that. It's rough. The legs are, are very bad. I'm embarrassed about the legs now. Don't. Uh, they, again, this they is... Should... Right, go ahead. It's beginning phases of concept art. Your idea here might spur on some other ideas. This is how we do it. This is how we build. Uh, I don't want all the people in class like, oh, my God, I, I can't draw like this. I can only... I'm, I'll be happy to stick people. So yeah. I want us to it, collaborate. It, it probably should be a little bit more like a grasshopper locusty, like it come I, up here and then come down. Like, exactly. I was going to say that. I think that would be very, very beneficial. A hinged sort of leg, so to speak. Yeah. I hate, hinged, hate hinged legs. So is that a stinger on his bottom or like a... That isn't... I forgot about the stinger thing. So did I, right? Yeah. This is <laughs> this is uh, what a friend of mine would call a glow butt. It's like a, you know, firefly. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, so it's a glowing thing. It's uh, I have a whole big thing about that. So uh, I would like I would like the, a glowy spot to be added to uh, the creature. And it doesn't necessarily uh, have to be in its bottom. It could be an no. iridescent sort of glow all over its armor. Yeah, no, but it's also well. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so the, these are, I don't know how, well, but then it, well, they, it uh, pops up or it shows, but uh, they're kind of more like spider type things. But like, uh, what, what are those called? Pinchers. Well, pinchers. Anyway. Or uh, like that the head kind of follows some of Eve's work. That's very serendipitous. Does it? Yeah, with the elongated snout and yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, this this stuff. I mean, I, the the colors aren't really that. You know, it's just to show difference. Uh, uh, so not necessarily how I am, uh, would imagine their color being, but this is. It's supposed to be like you know. This part is a little bit more like armor. Um, so this. The the bluish part would be um, like plate, sort of. But I miss it. Obviously, it's just natural. Well, I like the idea that it's segmented. Uh, again, yeah. if you look at the thorax of all insects, uh, it's very segmented, and you can build and, and take armaments and, and, and crafting stuff from it as well. So not yeah. a bad job. I'm anxious to see your hive work as well. Yeah, that kind of goes with it. Well, yeah, I, anything. I, um, you know, I wanted it to be bendable, so I figured the plate stuff needed there needed to be gaps so it could be bendable. Um, yeah, this this glowy stuff. I, I just, also, so th these guys. I want them to be to have building material in them. All right, you want to see the better one. <laughs> Now I, I I didn't get I didn't get to uh, to light, do light or shading so it's a little flat but it's still I think it's worthwhile anyway here it is I don't care I'm excited <laughs> <laughs> for the win <laughs> yeah um, but as you can see it's it's it would be a lot better if the lighting was there because then you you would be able to see the depth a lot better. But okay, and now I can explain all this stuff. I love uh, it. What's that? I, I it's brilliant. I love it. Oh, thanks. Now uh, the stuff that's and don't uh, don't take to heart the colors that that they're they're just uh, that's not necessarily actually the uh, the orange I was actually envisioning as blue and you know anyway. But I I just want to when I'm doing I'm it. Color I, just, I can't see anyway. Oh, I'm screwing with you. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Anyway, when, when I'm when I'm drawing it, I just try and get I just put some down some colors so I can tell the difference between things. But uh, um, this this orange stuff is it glows, so th that would be light producing. So it'd be casting, you know, orange light around here. Um, and uh, th these areas right here, 
this is where um, the carcasses of uh, dead animals would be stored. Uh, just over here too. And so I put these little uh, things, which I, I imagine they're just more of these things, but inside these little holes, and then and then with a, a film, uh, like a, a filmy substance to to kind of uh, seal off the front, so it's kind of like a screen. It reminds me of amber. Uh, what? It reminds me of amber, the petrified tree sap. I thought you meant the stripper at uh, the Devil's Playground. Sorry. <laughs> so did I. That's Amber Lynn. Oh, sorry about that, old bean. Sorry about that. All right, right, right. Go ahead. And this thing, this is this is liquid stuff. I, I was just thinking that the Queen would have this stuff in her, and she would she would um, produce it and kind of put it in this thing. And I don't know if she does anything else with it, mixing it up or whatever, but. Uh, uh then the other the other uh workers and stuff would come here and then they would they would they would gather that and so that's what i was thinking kind of that they put it you know that's what this was about in part and uh so they could they could uh, build these things and uh just have light everywhere because i was thinking maybe maybe they needed the glowing light they couldn't just uh see in the dark or, or they needed to see or whatever. And this this over here, this stuff is actually where uh, the eggs are. So um, so I was thinking each each one of these little uh, things would hold um, uh, multiple eggs and uh, there would uh, again be a, a film over that and I was I was thinking that uh, this stuff would would be warm, but it would cool off, and it might even lose its uh, glow after a while. So it would be something that would have to continuously be um, uh, uh, reproduced, and uh, and so the queen would have to fuss with uh, putting uh, uh, new amounts in in there to keep the eggs warm and stuff. And this this thing, I was kind of. This webbing, I was kind of thinking that uh, that might even be something that the that could um, kind of come come down like a cage and um, protect the eggs if, if there were invaders. And yeah, like the queen could do that with since she has that uh, stone uh, mag stone fragment in her. So maybe well, she could. Uh, could I make a couple of comments? This yeah, right. sure. Uh, I love the you know, glowing things that are going to be great for a level in the game because you can have these little lights all over the place. Um, I would think that your pyramid in the back, rather than just eggs, what if we had larvae in there? Ooh, that would be gross and exciting and at the same we'll, time. Well, I, I, I would think, yeah, after they hatch, then... Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. one of the things that might happen in the game is that when... When a player gets in that room, they start coming out. Yeah, I like that a whole, uh, whole little. Leroy arc. Jenkins. Sorry, I was also thinking that there, uh, there could be a, a sticky substance in between, like kind of a spider web type thing in between this, and uh, you know, still probably see through, um, but. Uh, that so anything that's trying to attack through there could get stuck on there and become an easy target. And then the, the reason for all this this purple stuff is is well I'm a, I, I'm picturing this everything that you see here is uh, is, is a product that they produce and and um, uh, it. it it's kind of gooey at first, and it hardens and stuff, so they can form it. So they they form this whole. So kind thing. of Geiger esque, huh? Kind of Geiger esque, like aliens. Yeah, it is. Um, and uh, so I was thinking this the the brown like this regular stuff that you see 
uh, in the majority of it, that would be the easiest to produce, but it, it wouldn't be um, as strong as some of the other stuff, like uh, like this stuff in the pillars. And then and then these these things would be to keep keep it it strong, you know, keep it uh, structurally you know, sounds. Yeah, yeah structurally the, sound. It, you know, tighten everything together force. so they yeah. weave that. Um, through there and these this 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 and this are all pathways um out of here and uh, this the reason for this little place i was thinking this is where i think this one's a little bit bigger uh this is where that they would bring the food in that's kind of down a, a ramp and they um would uh just kind of tumble it down here and then the queen could either come here and either eat it or, um, uh, you know. Uh, uh, I, I, some of the things I'd like to see as well, because we, we talked about larvae or larvae, however you want to pronounce it. I'd like to see some things hanging from the ceiling as well. Uh, and I don't know if we want to say that uh, they're metamorphosizing like, you know, butterflies or maybe one part of the insects that they have to go into the cocoon like that and then you know, you got this some big warrior thing. I think that might be kind of cool as well. We have some dead bodies and dead animals up there. I'd like to see prey hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, you could do that too. I, I, I envisioned that they would be stored in these little areas and kept warm or something. But, uh, uh, Well, you could take those glowing stalagmites uh, stalac and uh, invert them to the ceiling and encase things in them. Real quick, because I do want sure. to utilize this. Stalagmites might reach the ceiling. Stalactites must hold tight to the ceiling so they do not fall off. So we are all on the same page. Continue, please. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, and uh, I, well, I, if I could have gotten this finished, I would have, uh, I would have had. Uh, the little guys like crawling um, around here. I would have had a queen there, and they would have their glowing butts, which I, I think would look really neat in this. Let's ask Mr. Nelson that. As far as gameplay, I mean, I know you're, you're, you and Buzz are working on lots of different things. Would it be hard to throw a, a glow effect into, into the game? No, not particularly. It doesn't have to be, okay, good. Doesn't have to be actual lighting. You don't have to cast shadows or anything like that. I don't want, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be that realistic by any means. That's generally as easy as your material setup. So, okay. well, the, the, the static stuff should cast light, but yeah, the moving around should. Uh, uh, it's and, very easy to make part of the material glow. Yeah. All right, brilliant. All right, well done. Any more questions, Mr. Ray? No, I, I like it. The, the Queen's Chamber, it, it's really coming together. And uh, yeah, and uh, this this stuff I, I hadn't imagined that as being glowing, but it it's but with the this kind of lighter purple, it kind of makes it look like it's kind of glowing. So it, maybe it could be a lesser glowing substance as well. You know, another maybe just like not really brain. casting light, but but uh, but just kind of gl it was glowing, so you could kind of see it. I don't know. And again, talking about levels and stuff, how cool would it be like the stalagmites or the little pools there, whenever the characters, the closer they come, the more intense the glow they have. The further away they walk, you know, the light goes down a bit and makes the level a little bit more creepy and uh, harder at times. Derek, that's impossible to do in a game. Really? No, it's a lie. It's really pretty easy. You <laughs> I love you too. All right, hands up. Who can't stand Steve? I'm raising both of mine right now. Both of them. <laughs> I can't do that to my dad. You can do that to your dad. Your dad said he, it was a tie between you and Ty that he didn't like the most. Oh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> All right, continue. Well, that's how far I've gotten with this one. Hey, and, cool. and again, don't strike the trash. Do you know what a deep angler fish is? Deep sea angler is? I don't think so, no. Um, did you ever see Finding Nemo? Yeah. 
Um, there's a part in the movie where they get really down deep in a really dark area. Oh, and yeah. Like fish with a massive jaw and a little light bulb. Oh, yeah, that thing. Hanging from those heads. Do you think the bugs yeah. could do something like that? Because I think a very small light could be really creepy in a really dark area if the bugs snap up on you. Because even though it's there, it might be easy to miss. That's a good idea. And who's to say, going back with the fish idea, right? You have... Uh, I think they're called nurse sharks. The little sharks, that, or maybe the little fish that hang around like the great whites, and they, they bite particles and crap off of them. We could also have smaller insect-like creatures that are scurrying about, throwing off light and movement in the game. And that might be harder for, you know, in a game level when you have small bits moving about to, uh, to attack, you know, what's coming at you. That's a great idea, Sid. I think I'll keep you around. Oh, thanks. <laughs> any more questions? Let's let's open the panel panel up for any comments, questions. Um, somebody, uh, Mr. Miguel, is wondering if it's okay if he can show what he did. I would love that. Miguel actually got a hold of me, and I'm, uh, again, I'm old and forgetful, uh, but he's got some mad skills, and he wants to be part of this art team. And the more, the merrier. So let's do that. How you doing, Miguel? Hey, hello. Hey, man, how you doing tonight? Uh, fine. Yeah, yeah, very excited of all the things you're showing. Awesome. Let me see what you got, man. I'm really proud and very happy and honored that you're here, sir. Well, I mainly have some kind of the same idea that Wolf. I did this guy. I like the, the glowing bottom area and the little stinger thing. That's pretty good. Yeah, also, I'm a big fan of fireflies or the kind of insects that glow. So I was planning to, well, I was thinking of doing something like like a bee, but like a firefly or, or something like that. How cool the mount would that be in game, a flying mount with that sort of iridescent feel to it? I was thinking that maybe, well, the the thing that has below its mouth, maybe he can use it for some kind of attack, some sort of thing like that. Maybe he can. be a poison can... sack that it spits out some sort of gaseous film or... or I was thinking that maybe it could, well, something like the, the like it's butt, like it's like transparent or something like that, he can actually shoot at you the thing that's inside and because of it glows, maybe it can blind you or, or something. Or to be a good indicator, because you know, we're always talking about, we like good reads, just like silhouettes. It would be a very cool indicator if, if we, I'm not even sure other games have this attacking mounts or even just the attacking monster on its own, but whenever it glows like that, you know, right after the glow, boom, you better get out of the way because it's going to attack. And mm -hmm. as, as a gamer like Buzz, who loves to plan meticulously, I mean, you need all this, these, these sort of hints that you're, you're fainting to the right and you're actually going to do it. So I think that's a brilliant idea. Well, the main idea is that maybe these insects are just playing around. Maybe they're harm harmless unless you attack it. Then maybe it gets really aggressive and starts shooting you with all this stuff to blind you, and then it can attack you with the stinger. Maybe he can shoot it at you and and regenerate another one where this one came from. Brilliant! I like where you're going with it. Yes, uh, more stuff we can show or see. Uh, yes. Also, uh, because I know you're a fan of spot blood. <laughs> I thought something like this. Not bad at all. You think, Mr. I Steve? Think I was thinking of some kind between a, a warm mouth. I, I like it. It's very alien looking. I think I was thinking like a combination of a warm mouth like creature and a scorpion. Maybe it can grab you with this thing coming out of its mouth and then bite you or or pound you with its tail like this razor like tail. Yes. 
I like it. It has options. I like the color palette, too. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Some really good ideas. Very happy that you're here on board. So uh, let me ask you then, because obviously you're liking the creatures, uh, what department, so to speak, do you want to be attached to? Well, I was thinking about that, and I don't know. I I really like it. I really enjoy doing the creatures. I, but I also like the armor thing. I would be... I don't know what to choose between those two. Well, how about this? Let's keep you on creatures. And uh, I know Steve is going to need some more help with uh, armament and weapons as well. So uh, let's do cross-pollination, so to speak. You'll be doing working on armor and uh, creature work. How's that? Okay, sounds great. I'm cheap, I'm easy. Just ask anybody at the buzz house. Especially Nelson. Alrighty, so there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Mr. Nelson. Not gonna, not gonna comment. Uh, uh, wait, can I just have a suggestion? Yes, sir. Uh, I was thinking about uh, Wolf's Hive. I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking that maybe the, the, it you could have some kind of cocoons were, hanging from the stalactites, where, where these larves may be in, and this could be just like a huge source of, a huge source of light that it could be very, very shiny. It could almost blind you, I don't know. And maybe if you dare to attack it, the, the larves will fall down and everybody, everything will become really, really blindly, in la very, very lighty. You could do that. It would be a great part of the level, you know, when you're throwing magic or weapons around, explosions, uh, some of that stuff falling off and forcing uh, the playing characters to go to the right or to the left so that doesn't happen. Because it would be cool to have a big blinding light and seeing your screen just flash just for a split second. And I, I think that really makes some interesting gameplay. So that's a great idea as well. Uh -huh. Nelson, can you grab my screen quick? Who was that? Steve. Steve. How badly do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Damn, Nelson. Out of nowhere. I'm hugging you right now, Nelson, in my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've just been uh, kind of playing catch up and listening to suggestions tonight, so I thought I'd throw this up there. I like... The thing I really like, and it's very odd and, and weird, I like that, that it's like a, a triceratops, you know, has that big plate on its head, so it's very forward, motioning, moving. I like that a lot. I helped. Good job, Ty. I'm proud of you. Seriously. Um, this is Ray. One of the things I like about that is the sort of spider eyes, because I'm in, imagining that when these creatures evolve, <laughs> They naturally evolved with a certain uh, relationship to silicon, and you could have at least a couple of those eyes actually being stones. Ooh. That's how they communicate with each other. That's how the queen controls them. I like. And okay, let, let's take a small just itty bitty break. Do you see how this works? Uh, Eve had the idea of the spider. Th no, 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 no. It was Sid had the idea of the spider crab looking thing. And it's snowballing, and this is what I want everyone here to understand. It is a collaboration, and not any one person is going to get it right on the first try ever. But what we're doing right now is I think we're really narrowing down and focusing on what these creatures can look like. It's taking like five or six of us to get different visions, but we are picking the best of everything that we've done together. So again, I encourage you guys and gals, if you want to be part of this art team, raise your hand and let's do it. Sorry to interrupt, Steve. Continue, please, again. Or Mr. I really like this one, by the way. The head is really nice. And I like, I the, like the, the, the twist of the body. Uh, and, and again, just to uh, reiterate what Derek was saying, I was just sitting here listening. You know, I, I wasn't there last week, so I didn't get the benefit of any of that, so I was just listening to what everybody had thrown in. And uh, you know, I like the whip-like tail uh, with venom. Uh, the dual toes like the rest of the Aletheans, uh, the glowy things on the head, 
and uh, just try to pull it all together into one kind of thing. I probably wouldn't have thought this up without all of that. So, what do you think, Mr. Ray? Do we want to go? With, uh, this will be our look, just, and just refine this for next class. I like that basic look, and then the queen would have a uh, per. Um, uh, what Eve was talking about, she would have a much bigger, fleshier body, but she would still have the ability to wield a mean stinger. Because in the story, what happens is our heroine stone controls other stones, and it takes over her stones and makes her sting herself. That's how the, our heroine gets out of the fix. So nice. The, the sting has to be pretty flexible and, uh, you know, something like that that can whip around. And when the queen gets ready to sting her, all of a sudden she ends up stinging herself and dying, and that's how she gets out of that last fix. Brilliant. Can, I think can, you add, some. can you add something glowing to that, even if it's just like glowing stripes on the back or something? Oh, sure. That's easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was very quick chalk brush sketching. I know. But yeah, I would probably put in some uh, some glowing striations on the uh, mantle on the head and along the back. Uh, for the Even queen with a big fleshy body, I might put like dual stingers coming out the side of the head or something. More like. Sid, were you, were you speaking? Yeah, so maybe the um, long flexible stinger could glow at the end of the thing. I, I don't know what, what she said. I couldn't yeah. understand her either. I'm your, sorry. Your mic's really buggered, Sid. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> of course, that I heard fine. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Maybe you don't understand sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> I said maybe the stinger or the end of it could glow. That would be yeah. cool. It would also be another telltale sign whenever you're, you're, you're planning your attacks in, in a party. It starts to really better get out of the way because it does something with it. What, what, what is uh, is it is that is its claws or uh, uh, yeah claws going to be uh, long enough? I like I really like the look. They're like attached, are they attached to its head? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was just to segment it out a bit. Yeah, I think the front claws need to be a bigger, grabby. Well, what what I would what I would actually like is it if you kept if you kept those for like the head uh, claws, but if you had two more sets of claws that were attached to the body that were bigger and able to do stuff. Yeah, that would work. You know, like like big crab legs. Yeah. And then you could have the ones on the head, then pull stuff into the mouth once it gets close. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. that'd be awesome. I think we've nailed something here, ladies and gentlemen. Well done. Well, well thought out collaboration. Go team. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Go Teen Titans. Oh, geez. Great show. Great show. Um, I got some uh, birds ready to show if uh, Ray wants to see them. Can that'd be great. Uh, Great. You know, speaking of, like crap. Speaking yeah. of Teen Titans, uh, Lace, who is there, she reminds me a lot of Raven. She has this dry, rah, 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 sort of sense of humor. So I want to be Beast Boy. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, Beast Boy's awesome. All right, are we jumping into uh, Eve? Mm -hmm. Eve, Eve, I'm excited to see what you've got. So... That's not uh, not all. Basically, it just got bigger and bigger. Did you Great just color. do this? Yeah, that was. Um, I don't. I give up. I quit. I'm going home. I know, right? <laughs> Look at those Pastel. colors. <laughs> is, that, is that pastel or? Um. Yeah. Basically, uh, that's why I usually for this, those sessions and anatomy and every other class, I like to use my paint. They have really great kind of sketching. Um, uh, brushes to just uh, throw color down really quickly and efficiently and have, uh, even though they don't have those kind of blending modes from Photoshop, um, but most of the br brushes um, blend very well or you have a blender 
uh, in in it um, in, in the program itself. So basically, if you t uh, take it, it's like when you uh, use the smudge uh, smudge tool in um, in Photoshop to uh, get those kinds of effects really quickly. Wow. Beautiful. Smudge. Um, yeah, the smudge, the uh, oh, finger, finger huh. icon to um, blend in colors. And basically, my paint is as free. You can uh, make the the canvas as kind of infinite. So, uh, how uh, wide I want to zoom out or zoom in, uh, it works. Even if it's kind of crude in some uh, ways, it has just some really great artistic brushes that, um, for sketching, allows you to um, drop color down really quickly and um, have kind of a really great pastel or watercolor look to it. And Steve, uh, I'm a dinosaur. And this, <laughs> this is uh, Ray. My paint is free. Anybody can get it. Yeah. Uh, Eve, you were reading my mind. The second one from the left. This uh, one? Yeah, that is almost exactly what I was imagining. Yeah, very Phoenix looking. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's very alien, but beautiful. It basically, does not look um, like an earth bird, but it's bird-like and it's absolutely gorgeous. Well done. It has basically um, not one pair of wings, it's kind of more like a, a, a butterfly, uh, having uh, two pair, uh, um, two sets of wings um, to make, get that uh, kind of alien look. Um, yeah, and uh, I don't know how those um, birds are called, those ones with those big long feathers that they can um, put out. Um, peacock? Peacock, yeah, right. Um, I thought that, that would give it a kind of phoenix-like um, look and to make it really slender and elongated. The other ones were just kind of, um, uh, yeah, were, um, yeah. I'm really tired <laughs> um, uh, trying to kind of um, uh, different ideas or some parts of, of the original um, idea um, and uh, switch it up a bit, different colors. Uh, so basically, it doesn't even have to be kind of this blue one, but trying to have a, um, to mix the colors, um, um, how, would, uh, how they would look like and, uh, for example, I could make this one blue or green or kind of a reddish violet. It's all possible. I love it. Well done, ma'am. No kidding. Absolutely. Yeah. And basically, yeah. the the one on the side was just an idea for a kind of a mob. Kind of, um, I forgot to do, uh, to do it um, this week, but for example, some um, some enemy. Uh, in a starting area, uh, kind of mischievous birds um, that can't fly, uh, running, um, for example, in, in dune or in, uh, des um, in forest areas having kind of uh, nests. Hey, can you show Steve, because he's not here last week, and it would be cool to see it again, for those who did, uh, but the penguin mount that you did. Mm -hmm. This is a brilliant idea, Steve. You'll love it. Oh my God! Did he do? Did she do a sand penguin? She did. She did a couple of them. <laughs> this was the first. Oh, for the win. No kidding. <laughs> I even thought about um, na naming um, naming conventions for uh, animals. Uh, that's basically a, a mix between Japanese and Polish. Because um, Japanese uh, use kind of uh, phonetic uh, descri uh, descriptions for uh, some kinds of animals or to make them kind of cute. Um, uh, and for example, for uh, for a little dog, um, uh, the sound for wolf is one, and they would uh, and they would say one core is kind of a pretty cute little doggy, and one one is that so uh, so. Um, the, uh, the now you're just showing off, Eve. I'm, I'm uh, just showing, you're just showing off. No, it was just kind of tossing around some, uh, some great idea. Uh, thoughts. 
and uh, yeah, the, um, it's kind of a sound, uh, thought that maybe uh, when they walk they could have some kind of sound uh, maybe from the throat or because of those uh, legs. And uh, yeah, uh, basically the word means beak, but uh, I kind of used it once uh, with some friends um, describing some, I think it was a game where you could ride an ostrich. It was kind of really cute and deformed and as uh, they had a really cute sound while it was walking uh, on those two big feet and uh, it was kind of like this chupu 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 chupu. And I thought maybe... Um, Say it again. Do it one more time for me. <laughs> chupu 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 chupu. <laughs> it was kind of, this kind of sound and um, yeah, uh, it it's kind of sounded like Jub or a jubek uh, in Polish, which means beak or small beak, and uh, that's kind of. Uh, um, and I thought uh, took the Japanese naming conventions for uh, for some of uh, for cute animals. Well done. Um, well thought out. That is outstanding. See, I thought you liked that. I just remembered you didn't see it. I think I just did two of those, unfortunately. I planned on uh, doing more, but I, I really, really loved uh, this one with a with a really long beak. It's kind of smiling, so yeah. I'm proud of you again. I'm I'm blessed that everyone's here, and we have so much talent. We have different levels of talent, and I really believe that all of us are hungry, and we're going to produce a very, very slick, cool game that we'll all enjoy. Um, Mr. Ray, are you ready to unveil your unveil your brilliance? <laughs> well, I have a couple of things to show. Yeah, you, you do, and they will take your breath away. I have lost my breath already twice tonight. I look forward to losing my breath a third time. So do we. Shut up. <laughs> the first first thing I did. Uh, I I re uh, I retopologized my sculpture skinned it and uh, and uh, uh, rigged it. So uh, the latest version of Blender uh, that just came out, 2.67, has what they call freestyle rendering in it, which means you can have the computer do the outlines and the tune shading. So I simply took the Valley of the Spires, hosed my guy, and stuck him in front of that and made a render. I didn't touch this with a pen. Sweet. Heck yeah. So, that's, uh, awesome. again, that's you know, I, I, I love the free software. My paint that he was using is absolutely free. It's a wonderful program. Uh, Blender uh, is made this, but the other thing, I think this is what, uh, what Derek wanted me to show. And I can export this as an FBX, and it will go right into Unity. How cool is that? This is something That's we've come up with. This is real time. That's not a uh, an animation. That's real time. Nice. How cool is it to see something that we've all created and had a, a hand in to start to come to life? That's awesome. You're the man, right? So over the next week, what I want to do is uh, do an idle, a run, and a jump, and get it all into an FBX so that anybody who wants to, I'll put it in the Dropbox, anybody who wants to can bring it into Unity and play with it. So that's my goal for the next week. And also to start working on sculpting the female version. Rock on. Well done. So anyway, that's what I have for this week. <laughs> you didn't do much, did you? Yeah. yeah, you're going to have to step it up, Ray. Geez. Really slacker. Between you and Eve right now, I'm going to go hang myself. <laughs> Again, this is, I don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. I have smarter people around me that makes me look smart. Oh, thanks. I, I don't, except Ty. Except Ty. He eats glue. But anyway, I digress. Um, let's open up the panel for any questions. Uh, I don't see any. Um, no. Well, come on, ladies and gentlemen. You're all part of this project, this grand thing we call 
Oh, shit. We call it a game. A game in progress. <laughs> oh, the grandiose names just all escape me all of a sudden. All right, so let's divvy up what we're going to do next to a week. Um, Sid. What's up? What's up? All right, so what do you want your uh, your character concept people to do? Um, we want to concentrate well, mostly on... I definitely want to see Dad fit into that car. But... But will you be up to that, Mr. Steve? Because you got tons of stuff going on. I didn't well, catch any of that. <laughs> uh, she wants you to uh, finish that rendering out of that insect that you were doing. Oh, yeah. No problem. Okay, we got that going on. That's good. Um... How about as far as environment arts, Mr. Uh, Steve? What, I know you and Buzz, again, talked about different sorts of things, different feels that we want for the game. Yep. Um, Wolf, both the things, since I don't have Donald here tonight, both the things that you had, um, I'd like to see an, a couple more looks to the hive, maybe detail it out some more. And, uh, oh, okay. You mean, you mean like mix up the look or, or finish the the one I have. Um, you can put some finishing touches to that. and Yeah, put some finishing touches to that one and then maybe give us a couple different views or a couple different areas along the same line. Okay, I'll try. Of what various tunnels and or halls or anything might look like. And uh, I really like, you keep pulling up the one with the building with the trees. I really like that. I would like to see that push the, little part, the building to be, have a little bit more... Uh, uh, gem like angles to it and see what gym? you mean by that. What do you mean gem like? Uh, uh, like uh, Google like uh, quartz crystal. Okay. And using angles like that. Just to break it up from that kind of straight four wall house look. Right. A, a lot a lot of it's gonna be hidden though, but yeah. What a lot of it's going to be hidden by plants and stuff. But yeah, I just, I what really what shows, yeah. that reads, and I'd like to see that fleshed out a little further. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it, it, it's, it's a little bit difficult because I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I don't want it to look too much like, uh, like, oh, I'm, like they put stones on top of each other because, because thinking of uh, it as being kind of grown or whatever, doing magic stuff, it's like, well, that could act, these things could actually be one piece. They don't have to be separate pieces, but, but then you do that and, and it, it can look over um, simple. Well, how about this? Like you said one piece, but make one piece with those jagged angles and then put the trees around that because you'd have a lot more fun with the typology of how the trees wrap around this, this giant gem. And then you'd give a couple of indicators of the doors and maybe windows are at. That way we get kind of away from uh, what we're used to on Earth as a, a, an adobe in a house, something like that. Mein Hause. And so I like, might try something like, uh, I'm going to tap Eve here. Eve, what's the, uh, what are the ruins in uh, Thailand with the trees on them and uh, Ang Angwapur or something like that? Angor could, could be. I'm more uh, next to the, uh, China, Korea, Japan, Southeast a East Asia is not really my area of expertise. Angor Wat, there you go. Yeah, I might I might pull up a few pictures of that in uh, whatever you use, Photoshop or whatever, and just paint over it and work with blending that and changing some angles and see what you come up with. That'll be exciting. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll try. I'm <laughs> I'm only going to be able to do so much. I ha have to work on some other stuff, too. But. Oh, I feel you, bud. I feel you. But, yeah, I just start working that direction. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll see where we get. All right. Good, good deal. Okay. Uh, back to you, Sid. What do you want us to do for character work? I want to see some, uh, at least two different versions of what the queen's talking about. All right. I will, I, will, I will do two to three versions of a queen. Uh, one will be named Freddie Mercury, the other one David Bowie, and one the Queen Mom herself. Um, Eve, why don't you uh, do a couple of those? Because uh, I know you're busy 
as well. Let's just finite our, our I guess, our, our focus like laser to the queen next week. How's that? I'll do okay. two to three versions. You do two to three versions. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll pick it apart, dissect, just like we did this, uh, the hive creature. Then hopefully by the time next week rolls around, Chelsea will have a couple of pictures or pages down of the comic book. I know she's working tonight, but hopefully next week she'll be here. Hey, Ray, can you pull that up again? He's lying. Oh, what out? Uh, that, yeah, that one. That, that's kind of what I'm talking about, Wolf. If, if you looked at, like, Anger Watt and then took some of the uh, crystalline angles that you see there and implemented it, that's kind of what I got in my head. Okay. Um... Now, if trees yeah, were just so, out so, of that and such. so just just some angle not not like constant angles everywhere but uh, just more but yeah it just to break up that typical normal right. human house four square timber built look All right awesome good all right uh, so we got the queen that we'll be doing. Uh, Wolf will be working more on the angles of uh, the blah blah what thing. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm a bit tired as well, mind you. Uh, Steve will be doing uh, the insect to find out everything, and hopefully Chelsea will have some stuff to show us. And uh, I think that's basically going to wrap us up tonight. Let's open up the panels one more time because I, I definitely want to take some questions. Well, wait, well, wait Miguel's got to work on something. Uh, Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to ask about that. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah our new guy. Uh, you know what? Let's do. Some, you said you wanted to do some armor. Uh, yeah. and I, I take some of the Alethian shots that we have already, and I've got to get that on 3D Buzz. Uh, I know Wolf Knightley has got a whole collage, or not a collage, but a whole gambit of those uh, Alethians with different colors and different shapes, front and side view. Get on 3D Buzz, use that as a baseline, and start designing. Design me at least three to four different armor sets with uh, you know, movable plate pieces. I think it will be great to show that. Okay, where do I grab it from? From the forums or, or where? Well, of course, it's in the forums, correct? Uh, yeah, there, there's, uh, there's one that's a decent... Uh, Resolution in the forums. Just uh, what the concept? Uh, wait, what, what? What is the? Where the concept art is? Which one is that? It's the uh, MMO uh, design. Or, design. Uh, design. The design section. No, yeah, okay. it's, it's, I believe it's in the one that I started. Uh, there's a thread that I started that has my concept art. It's in there. Okay, so you will find the nice concept art, 2013? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. And again, uh, Wolf did a brilliant job shading and coloring and adding different bits and pieces to uh, the Lithian baseline that I came up with. So again, uh, use Photoshop, use different layers, and, and throw some armament on them, and have fun with it. I mean, I think you'll have a great time. I'm looking forward to what you'll be able to bring to the table next week. Okay, I'll work on that. Thank you, sir. Anybody else here in the forums? Moonchild. What's happening, Moonchild? Uh, you want to volunteer and do anything for us? No. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I didn't know that was your screen name. I'm looking down at uh, Ray's thing here. I'm like, who the hell's Moonchild? That would be Eve, my Lipschen. Never mind. I know, I, she never does anything. I, 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 <laughs> never talks to us. She just stays in there. Never talks, never draws. Not like her. Eve. Now Eve, she. And Moonchild, I hear, is a butthead. But Eve, Eve is where <laughs> talents at. Moonchild's a slacker. Probably an only child, a Leo, doesn't do jack crap. Probably she's off with mom and dad, but not Eve. She's a Pisces. She's got two going on. Everything. All right, we're getting off topic here. Um, again, last chance to ask any questions. If not, we will reconvene again next Wednesday, same bat time, same bat channel. That's 9 o'clock Eastern my time. 
and uh, we'll have some more work to show. And and hopefully, uh, in the next two to three weeks, maybe Mr. Nelson will be able to announce what is going on there, which is fabulous. I cannot wait to tell you guys. Ow, stop it. He's pushing the button in the back of my head again. I'm not going to say anything, Mr. Nelson, I promise. <laughs> All right, anything from the team? Any last thoughts? Wrap it up. I think we're pretty well covered and set for next week. You guys did a great job. I was really looking forward to see what happened while I was uh, gone on the little vacay and stuff, and now I'm going to work, guys. Good, slacker. I mean, you only drove 12 hours to get home. I mean, I don't understand why you couldn't be in class, but, you know, that's all right. Well, as soon as I master time and space, which will be soon. I'm all of it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, interesting story. I won't go into details, but poor Steve fell asleep at work the other day. He called. He's like, I'm like, who the hell is this? Why is Steve and I usually get to touch base once a day, like around 10:30. This is an odd time. I'm like, oh my god, I hope everything's okay. He's like, hey man, I fell asleep at work. I was tired. And I think he called us to. I felt bad. I felt bad. I'm like, you rested now. I get back to work. <laughs> yeah, I tried to guilt trip you. So much for that. Yeah, so much for that. It's not going to work. We got lots of things to do. Ladies and gentlemen, of 3D Buzz. I do appreciate all of you. Keep your feet on the ground, your ankles slightly above them. Uh, visit the forums, visit the forums, share your ideas. Collaboration is key and the word of the day. So next time you hear the word collaboration in the next 24 hours, you will yell like little girls at the top of your lungs. With that, we will wrap it up tonight. Mr. Nelson, take us out, buddy. <laughs>